Okay. <laughs> Where's Terry? On the phone. Talk. Delivering a baby. <laughs> okay, but what? All right, Teresa. Um, all right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, Marcus is going to talk light rail for about an hour here or so, and then we're all going to, those of us who can make it, we're going to uh, take a ride on a rail. That's right. Good. Um, Anthony may join us, I hope. We'll see. Mr. Riddick is not here today. He uh, has got conflict. And so here comes Terry. Let me just ask real quickly, is you got anything, Anthony? Andy, you want to put counsel? I'm good. Yeah. Barkley. I, I um, want to get back to this uh, redistricting of awards. Uh, as you know, we had a rather lengthy and um, violent discussion last week. It was all in the best of spirits. Uh, I mean, subsequent, to that, subsequent to that, I think I've heard the, the proposal to I guess, call the Jordan, Jordan proposals out there. But uh, I think there was some tweaking done, I guess, by Tommy of, not, of, of a new set of lines that does not break up uh, the north side precinct um, after a, a lengthy discussion with our mayor. I think He's agreed that would be a good compromise. We've also talked to Tommy and Terry. I haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen it. No. Talked. Yeah. What the U.S. Open? You did talk to me, and it wasn't in a closed room, and we didn't smoke cigars. <laughs> but anyway, uh, how do we go about? I think I feel like, at least in my mind, it's a good compromise, uh, and I'm trying to figure out how we get this. Do we put yeah. that as what do you call it, 2A or something? Yeah. And, and, discuss it next week yeah, and, and I think it's a good result too um, one of the issues I had was dividing of precincts and I didn't want to divide any but this only divides one instead of two so I think it's a it's a step forward obviously there's some, some the guys who were most affected by the change in the wards uh, you know, have been um, have liked the plan as well and so I'm perfectly agreeable uh, with the plan, I appreciate Barkley's leadership here, as well as you know Tommy and Andy coming together, and I'm prepared to support that as well. So, uh, what I guess I'm, the mechanics of it is that we're going to review it before the, that, and I guess the well, you know, I know that we do next. Oh, okay. okay. Well, in, in light of that, I mean, I don't see any reason to put the change of North Side on the on the agenda. If you follow me? Yeah. My my earlier notion was we would take all of North Side. And move it to uh, over to uh, Tommy's ward, but now this doesn't move north side at all. The north side stays as one precinct. The only thing that happens is West Ocean View gets gets uh, divided. We've already given it to the attorney to, and he's already got the plan, so you can see it, Terry. So um, I, I would, Tommy. I don't know if you and Tommy, if you want to continue with your plan now, or just put on the on the compromise at this point. No, I think the compromise is great because we all talked okay. about yeah, it. I so think, I think so, so we'll have, we'll have two plans. We'll have okay. two plans on the agenda. One, this compromise. We, we were never very far apart. And um, then the, uh, the Jordan plan. The, the Jordan plan. And okay, we can, Mr. Attorney, we can have those both at the meeting next week and, and act on Y yes, we can. The, our surveyor is putting them in the correct form to describe the boundaries now. Uh, and that uh, we met with uh, Mr. Jordan yesterday and were able to put his plan on the web page that we had developed and had the previous alternatives on. So that Mr. Jordan's plan is on the web page now. And we'll have that ordinance ready for next week. We're working to get it out this to you on this the week. Web page. Uh, this one is not yet on the web page. And uh, Hearing um, your discussion of it today, we will um, endeavor to put it. So we have two A and Jordan. Yeah, and I can summarize this briefly. Um, the Ocean View School Precinct, which is I think the largest precinct in the city, um, <coughs> is really comprised of two neighborhoods: the Willoughby section and West Ocean View. Uh, which is commonly called Ocean View, uh, but it's really the western part. And it just took the Willoughby section and left it in Ward 1, but it puts all of the West Ocean View section in Ward 5. 
Um, and this does not break up a community of interest because uh, the Civic League actually that represents that area, this is their exact boundaries um, for that Civic League. And Willoughby has their own Civic League. So when we're looking at um, what was happening before with dividing Northside up, that takes care of that issue. And then it keeps this community together as well. Okay, and I, I appreciate your work on it, because I think everybody's ability to compromise, at least to affect it, people. In the case, it really didn't affect me, but it does affect me. This is my ward, and it's the mayor. So, you know, so uh, I think we've come on something good. Just on the description up here, you want to take off more side on there because it's no longer anything that's left yet. That's all I have. Okay. If there are no other questions, then we'll move ahead. I have one thing. Um, I was reading about the changes um, that were proposed or, or that actually passed the General Assembly regarding EPOL and how other cities are looking at where, what they're going to do regarding people. Are we looking at what we're going to do or if we're going to do anything or how other cities' ordinances may affect our ability to attract and retain businesses? Because I think some of the other localities are looking at um, doing away with it or reducing it drastically or you know something. They're, they're, they're exploring all the parameters Yep. all the options that they have under the, the new General Assembly um, legislation. So I hope that we are looking at that so that we can remain competitive when it comes to attracting and retaining businesses. Yes. I'm not a fan of doing away with revenue, but I don't want us to do away with businesses either. Sure. So. One of the options is to allow it to be a flat tax. Is that I mean, there's a, there, there are a couple of different options available, and um, I just don't want us to get stuck out there where, you know, we're, we're not up to snuff with all the other cities in terms of competitiveness. Sure. And, and even before the General Assembly action, that's something that we do, Ms. Williams, uh, each year. We look at uh, how competitive we are. We look at the different tax rates and the structures versus other localities. And you've got something on your desk on home-based businesses, I suppose, yes, that you're I looking do. at? Yes. Okay. Good, good. All right. I just have one thing. Bees. Are we going to see a bee ordinance? He's written the ordinance. Yeah. Are yeah, we gonna, what are we going to vote on bees? We have bees, bunnies, and I forget the third. <laughs> For bees, chicken. bunnies, and birds. Chicken. Yes. Chicken. Yes. Chicken. <laughs> so it's all coming together. Yes. Oh, what? Oh, her. <laughs> well, that soon. Okay. Okay. We're going to redraw the line. Is that what you guys do with your committee meetings? <laughs> yes. Bees, bunnies, birds. Bees, bunnies, birds. Bees, bunnies, birds. Bees, bunnies, birds. <laughs> we at least come up with ordinances. <laughs> We're always making some progress. Maybe not the biggest issues in the world, but people can sing about the birds and the bees and the Buzz bunnies about the bees. on the and while they're busking and <laughs> moving the <laughs> and they're all going to be riding their bikes down to the busking. The 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 busking <laughs> bikes, birds, <laughs> bees. Yep, got the bees. Yep. Okay. Okay, we're very good, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, today, uh, staff, we've spent a, a good deal of time with uh, light rail and the operations of light rail. And it's very clear that those uh, discussions haven't come up to this level. So what we're trying to do today, before we uh, ride the tide, we have a couple of presentations, one by John Kuyper and another by Bob Badger to talk about what we're doing in terms of just the operations as well as the promotion and um, the promotion <coughs> activities. So we'll start with John. Good afternoon. It's, uh, I think we're going to have a good time this afternoon. We're uh, going to talk all about light rail after three and a half years of construction. Uh, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're coming to the end of the track. Uh, and we're going to tell you all about it today. The uh, revenue operations date has been announced as August 22nd, and there will, it will be open to the public for free rides starting August 19th. What we're going to be doing this afternoon is I'm going to speak a little bit about the an update on the construction schedule. Also in your places you have a uh, packet that includes a tied information guide 
that has a lot of the information that we'll be talking about, some of the details and some of the questions that you may ask. Um, we're going to talk here for a little bit. I'll speak, then Bob Batcher will talk about the marketing and publicity plan. We're going to get on, get on the train and ride out to HRT's vehicle storage and maintenance facility. That's where they have their operations control center. We'll be doing the maintenance on the vehicles, uh, storing the vehicles, and that's where their employees report to work. Jim Price, their HRT's director of rail operations, will then give us a briefing about their testing program, train <laughs> operations, maintenance, and cleanliness of the trains and the stations. Then we'll hear from Ron Edwards, who is HRT's safety and security manager, and he will talk about the safety certifications that are going on with the rail project as well as, well as security. I uh, do want to start off by mentioning, you know, there's a lot of people that have been involved in this, this project, and I'll mention some of them as we go through here. But, uh, you know, we've been through uh, a couple of city managers. We've had ACM involvement, uh, excellent support from them. Stanley had the project for a long time and got it, got it well, well along. Uh, Daryl Hill and his finance folks, uh, you don't hear much about them, but they're keeping track of all the ex expenditures and paying the invoices. Utilities has been involved extensively in relocations of things, as well as public works, uh, recreation, parks, and open space department has installed the landscaping and will be maintaining it. There's been a lot of contact between police, fire, and, and uh, EOC with the HRT security people. They've run a number of drills on different scenarios and have been working together on security and safety procedures. And of course, our communications department has been involved throughout the, throughout the whole thing. Uh, quickly, uh, I think you know the status of, of the uh, construction. A, a lot has been completed. Uh, you may remember that we had uh, over a year's worth of extensive work, utility relocation downtown with a number of utilities. We received excellent cooperation from those utility companies, particularly Dominion and Virginia Power, and that took a lot of coordination uh, by our public works folks, uh, a lot of traffic control from police. We had excellent cooperation from DNC, the downtown businesses and residents, and the uh, civic leagues throughout the project. Um, second thing listed there is wetlands mitigation. This was a, there's a wetlands created over by Grandy Village that's become part of the uh, one of the amenities of some of the new construction that NRHA has done over there. That was completed early in the project, and we did the you know the major eastern and downtown civil and rail construction, which was very disruptive for a long time and finished about a year ago. The 11 passenger stations are are done. The traction power system with the overhead wires is complete. And I have a, uh, this is something you might find interesting. This is, this is one of the, uh, the wires that you see overhead. It's not just a, a small thing that, uh, that you might think of as a, as a wire in your house. I, I bent that and see if you can see <laughs> it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they brought that out on a spool and have strung it overhead, and that will have the electricity and it, it will, again, a bare copper wire that the train pentagram will be, will be touching. Uh, the vehicle storage and maintenance facility is completed. We'll be going there as our, in a stop on the, on the train ride. Uh, the light rail vehicles uh, have been brought in, thoroughly tested. There's nine of them. They're all ready to go and have all have been run uh, for 1,000 hours, so they've met their testing requirements. And there are a lot of real estate actions were taken uh, care of as well, and the city attorney's office was involved in a number of those. Uh, work still needing to be completed, but is nearing completion. The park and ride lots. You'll see that there are three park and ride lots under construction at Ballantyne Military Highway and Newtown Road, and we're going to go out to Newtown Road and uh, see that one. Uh, the fair vending equipment. Uh, I have a, uh, a board here that uh, we can pass around that shows the ticket vending machines, and uh, you know you'll see one of those out there, but you can see that. It's a simple operation. You can put in uh, money or a credit card, and it gives you a couple options on what type of tickets you might get out of it. And on your fact sheet, and I'll talk a little bit about some of the fare structure. But we'll see some fair vent one of the fair vending equipment machines. There's one down here and also out at Newtown Road. The landscaping for the project is nearly complete. Uh, there still is some work to be done over at the EVMC station and at the park and ride lots. Our 
uh, recreation parks and open space, Daryl Critton and Dean Bowles have done an outstanding job of making the whole project look very, very nice. They do have a little bit more to do, and they'll be maintaining the landscaping on the project after we go into operations, except for the parts uh, inside the fence lines that, that HRT will be taking care of. Uh, public art, that work is in progress. There are medallions uh, on the plat station platforms that are a number of stations in the handout. It mentions where those are located. There is not one out at Newtown Road, but they are at the other stations. The, the other thing that is happening is the glass uh, windscreens in the back of the station uh, stations themselves. Those are being taken out and they'll be etched with different designs and there's been some publicity about what those look like and all that should be done within the next couple of months. Um, additional safety items. As we neared completion of the project last, last September and with the new safety manager coming on board, there was a, an extensive walkthrough by a number of people from the city, including our traffic folks, police, as well as a number of people from HRT where they walked from end to end on the rail line and identified a number of additional safety items that needed to be installed to make it safer. Uh, one, one type of item that's being installed right now is, are the safety humps that you see along the edge of the tracks to keep people, keep motorists from going into the wrong locations. We're also going to be installing some bollards. Uh, they're represented by orange cones right now, but those bollards will be installed within the next week or so. We also put in a lot of additional signage and, and uh, improve some crosswalks. So uh, that work is ongoing as well. They're continuing to order their spare parts and materials, and we're continuing to work on the traffic signal system. Our city transportation traffic folks, John Stevenson and some of the others, have been up nights working on this for the last month and a half. The signal system is working pretty well. Yesterday we had some problems where we had some of the signals were, were locking out and either not letting the trains go or not letting the cars go, and we're working through those problems, and it's, and it's much better today. So uh, all of this work will be done by uh, August. Now, HRT is into their operations testing. What they're going to be doing is verifying that they can meet their projected schedules. And so they've started running trains at basically a full schedule as of yesterday. They'll continue to do that through July 14th. And then what they're going to be doing is for a month, they'll be running their operations just as they're going to when the thing is, is open to the public. They'll be running full operations all day at the full schedule, but without passengers. That's a requirement from a safety standpoint that they get from the state and the Federal Transit Authority. Now, with that comes some particular challenges downtown of our police department and HRT uh, in, in terms of traffic enforcement and so forth. We have a lot of situations where people, delivery trucks and whatnot, are used to either parking on the rails or parking in the travel lane next to the rails which forces people to drive out around them. We can't have that anymore, and so there's going to be an extensive uh, continuing program of education and enforcement as needed. Uh, over the last few months, the city and HRT visited every business along the downtown rail route as well as outside the downtown, spoke to them about safety procedures, deliveries, and so forth. We sent letters to all of the, the vending companies but getting the word to everyone is going to be a challenge, but that's going to be one of the big things we're dealing with over the next month is to keep people off the, off the track so the trains can run. Again, we mentioned that revenue operations will be starting in mid-August. This is the rail line. Uh, John, you want to come back to that? Because I... Yes, sir. I mean, I think most people... That, so we were having that press conference today. There was a guy riding his bicycle right down the middle of the tracks. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think most people see that as, I don't know if they see it as a walkway or a travel path, but I don't know if we need more signs or just a strong education uh, effort. But, I mean, during the press conference, I looked down and I was standing on the tracks. You know, I mean, it's just, I mean, it looks like part of the walkway of us. So we need to alert people. This is a whole new change in attitude yes, sir. about that, and it's not going to be easy. Yes, sir. It, I mean, it was a very simple bike path because this guy was just following the trails right to the bike, you know, right down the road. It could look like it. We've had cars drive through the plaza here and stuff. Hopefully those speed humps that we put at the <laughs> end will, uh, will warn people not to go in there, but it is going to be a continual challenge, and it will be easy for people to cut through. But 
you know, we've had our city employees, all kinds of people used to using that as a shortcut, and we're going to have to educate people and, and are working on it very, uh, very strongly. There are efforts going out into schools, public service announcements, and so forth that we'll do everything we can to educate people. I have a question about the fair vending machines. Mm -hmm. I didn't, if, if that's an accurate display, it's English only. Is there going to be any type of bilingual translation anywhere? I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to find out. That's an interesting question. I don't know. Angela, we'll, we'll remember to ask that question on the tour because Jim Price out on the tour will have the answer. Yeah, really okay. answer. I mean, we have people from, you know, I mean, the com most common is like Spanish. So. Right. I'll try to remember to answer, ask that. Hey, um, this is the, uh, the system. You see it. Uh, all of the stations except for the one at Norfolk State are at grade. The one at Norfolk State by Brambleton Avenue is an elevated station, and there is an elevator Elevator there. All of the stations are ADA accessible, and there's been extensive work to make sure that they're uh, compliant with all of that. Okay, the, the schedule for the tide, and again, you have this stuff in, in your handout here, uh, will be running, as indicated there, from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday. We added an hour to rather than 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., here within the last week. Friday and Saturday, it'll run to midnight. And Sundays, we took some hours off in the morning to compensate for the Monday through Thursday. And it'll run from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. And you'll see that there's different frequencies during the peak hours. The trains will be 10 minutes apart. And uh, at off-peak hours, they'll be 30 minutes apart. This is the fare schedule. And the same fares apply to sorry, all. Sorry, yes. The hours? Yes, sir. When, um Say there's a tides game. Yes, sir. And people come in to the, on the tide to watch a tides game, but we know that baseball games go longer sometimes, or if there's a rain delay, I guess they're just. No, no. Uh, one of the things that we will be doing is, is working with HRT. They'll be attending our city special events meetings, and also we've already talked to them about the fact that if the baseball game does run late, they'll continue to run the trains. Okay. And so we'll plug in on things like that as well as some of the major events down at Harbor Park so that so that people aren't stranded. And the festivals at Town Point as well? Yes. Okay. They, they're on our special events committee, so anything that we have that runs late, uh, we'll, we'll intend to run the trains late as well. Okay. Uh, the fares indicated that the, the one one-way fare, one ride, is $1.50, the one that's Perhaps more useful is the three dollar and fifty cent fare, uh, and you get down to the uh, daily and, and monthly passes, and you all have a, a free ticket there, a one day go pass in your packet that you can go ride the the train or the buses around all day for that fare. Uh, have a, is this in our package? The fare? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know those are the standard fares. There are some opportunities to work out deals with the uh, you know, universities and businesses that Bob Batcher will talk about in a little bit. Uh, there are parking stations with uh, light rail parking. The parking is free. You see the number of spaces there. Now that adds up to 750 spaces, which we don't think is going to be enough. So uh, HRT is involved in some efforts to try and increase that. One thing that they're doing is they're in the process of negotiating a, a deal with a church to try and add 150. 170 spaces out at Newtown Road, and so there are opportunities to continue to improve the amount of parking, but that's what we have right now. And also, we'll have shuttle buses and so forth when, when necessary. Nothing all on the Collie Avenue yet, huh? Nothing on the Collie Avenue. No, no parking over at, no, sir, not at EVMC Fort Norfolk, no parking over there. And is there any anticipated? No. Now, that will be served by a number of bus routes buses, including the net bus that will be coming down Cauley Avenue from Ghent to serve that area. So we're hoping with that shuttle bus, they'll run the same hours as the light rail, that that will provide that service. Uh, in your packet also, towards the back of the handout, there's some information on the net, the new schedule and so forth. But there was no parking planned for uh, that station at the, from the start. So let's just say the first day that the first Monday that this is running, 
what happens if 400 cars come to Newtown Road to park and ride it in downtown? What are you, what are you going to do? Well, uh, again, HRT is hoping to have some additional spaces across the street that would handle 430 cars. As, at some, of, at some as of August, uh, when it starts, you mean? Yes, oh, okay. yes. But there are going to be occasions where, where there uh, is more demand than there are spaces, and so one of the challenges is to find ways to deal with that. There could be some remote parking lots a few blocks away that they could run shuttle buses to and so forth. To a great extent, we have to see what happens, but that is one of the challenges is to get more parking as we hope and anticipate that there'll be more people riding it than, than John, the capacity. John, if I can, I can kind of touch on that one. We all say it already. Councilman Wibley, we, one thing we discovered in doing some of our outreach, uh, when we met with the business and businesses at Newtown Road, there was some interest by the hotels in that to actually start getting into the shuttle business. They saw some business opportunities by having that become a, a hub. So I think part of it will be the response from HRT, but also the, the local community there seems to be getting very creative as to how to transport people around. Black and white cab was there. So I think we might be seeing some new entrepreneurial movement that we haven't seen before. Kind of what Frank has been talking about with TOD. With the brick and mortar, there's going to be business and kind of human change of behavior over there too. Yes, thank you. Bob. John, is the Newtown Road parking lot going to be done? Yes. Ask Mr. Shuket, yes, sir. He's he's very insistent on that. There's a lot of lot of work to be done there. Half of half of the new uh, half of the military highway one is done. The Newtown Road one should uh, should be finished without a problem. When we go out there to, today, you'll see there's an awful lot going on. Okay, I was just there by that way last week, and it, I would, okay. Yes, sir. They do have a lot to do, but uh, you know, make sure you mix the, the uh, concrete the right way. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, now, with the, with the light rail, HRT is increasing their bus service, primarily increasing the hours of the bus service. And this shows the tentative routes, uh, or the, the routes that are intended to connect to each of the stations, uh, the different bus routes. And you have some material in your handout that shows each of those bus routes, as well as uh, one of the maps of each of, for each of the stations that shows where the bus routes go. But there is an extensive network of connector buses that ties into the existing bus system. The hours will be the same as the light rail. Again, we'll look for opportunities to run buses at special events and we'll have the net bus downtown. Uh, in your handout folder, you do have this tied information guide. There's a lot of information in there that uh, we haven't talked about. Be happy to answer some questions on it. I mentioned the uh, bus service to light rail that has uh, individual maps of the, of the stations in there. There are a number of brochures, a couple of them by the city and a couple of them by HRT that describe the system and talk about safety. Uh, this system map shows HRT's current bus routes. They'll be updating that with the light rail. And the last thing you have in there are vicinity maps. These are uh, on the wayfinding boards at each of the light rail stations and their replications of it. And they indicate, uh, you know, nearby attractions and so forth, as well as the bus routes that, that they might take. Um, be happy to answer any questions before Bob comes up. John, it, it, it's still a, kind of an honor system in a sense that you buy your ticket and you don't go through a turnstile, so you walk onto the train. That's what correct. Are, what are we, I, I'm just curious about the process of how we're double checking to make sure that people are actually paying for the fare and that we're also not just having people that are riding it either to um, bank for money, um, you know, that are using it for things that are, they have, what, are they walking through when it stops or are they walking through every station? Well, there, uh, it, it is on an honor system where you buy your ticket uh, because of the layout and so forth being in the, in the middle of the city. Uh, it isn't practical to do that. So you will buy your ticket. Uh, it will be time stamped when you buy it. You'll need to use it, say, the, the one-way ride within an hour or so forth. If it's a weekly pass, it'll indicate the time. It, there's two things happening in terms of fare enforcement. HRT has a contract with a private security company, and they will have fare enforcement officers riding the trains randomly. In addition, HRT is going to be hiring uh, 
off-duty Norfolk police officers, basically two per day for the full time of the operation, and they will be insisting in the fair enforcement as well. So what will happen is, uh, you know, randomly the fair enforcement or police officer will get on the train and, you know, walk from one end to the other to, uh, to take care of the fair enforcements, and if somebody's non-compliant, then it gets into some legal stuff, and we have some uh, ordinances that the city attorney's office is working on to cover some of that. But that's the way it'll work. It will be an honor system. Otherwise, there will be times when people get on and they won't be checked, but there are other times where they will be. Well, that was my second question was, what's the fine for not paying? I, guess it's, or it's a, I believe it's a class one misdemeanor. And I'm not sure what that means. It's pretty heavy. But it, is a, it could be a significant fine. Go to jail. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a jailable. Months. 12, months. 12 months in jail, $25 fine. Yeah. I, I can't remember what it's it is. It's fairly high. I'll have to get you what it is. Yeah. They'll be encouraged to get off the next stop and buy a ticket. And this is the way, this is the standard operating procedure for all 23 systems. So it's because of the multi entrance. So even in Jersey, that's done that way. Right, yeah. I mean, I'm aware of that. I just, but every state also has different laws and rules, and I want to make sure that we are. Those ordinances will be coming out of you. Tasha Scott in, the, in, in Bernard's office, uh, we've had a meeting with, with her and police and HRT, and they, and they uh, have reviewed the ordinances to make sure things are covered, and I believe there will be some modifications coming to some ordinances in, in a bit. Uh, so that, that is being looked at. Well, and my, my other part of the question deals with you. Um, and kind of the light rail being a, a safe harbor, for lack of better terms, for kids that are in need of transportation um, and that it's a safe place to go um, to be able to get home, but they don't have the fare to get on the train, but could, could get on it still if it meant their safety and being able to get from a location to a home, you know. Yes, sir. And one of the things that uh, we are working on with HRT is to meet with each of the universities, TCC, Old Dominion, and Norfolk State, to try and work out a system where with a student pass, uh, everybody that's a student will be able to, to ride the rail. And with that, Bob can, uh, can talk about that a little bit. Which one of you two can we ask questions on, on the prices? Um, Me. All right. With regard to City of Norfolk parking, when you came to parking at uh, MacArthur Center, I think it was, if you were paying, it was 85 a month. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. All right, and and I was just calculating it under the scenario. Somebody could save $25 a month if they park at an outlying parking ride and come in on the light rail. Yes, sir. What is the parking that people pay to park at Harbor Park? That is, I think, $43 a month, Bill. Yeah. Well, did we ever calculate that if it costs $43 to drive your car to the Harbor Park and Park, that it would be more expensive if you parked at Newtown Road? It would cost you basically 60 bucks a day. Why wouldn't it be the inverse? Why haven't we figured this out yet? The parking in Newtown Road is, is free. It's free. Right, but the and cost so of the buy... rail is, is going to be 3 bucks a day. Basically. Well, it's $50 for a monthly pass. All right, let's say you don't get the monthly pass. Let's just buy right, monthly pass, 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's still more expensive to park at Newtown get to your front door, and though. to come in. Get right to your front door. No, I mean fifty dollars in Newtown versus eighty-five dollars to park in a garage. I agree with that, but but, but it but is still more expensive to, to do that. Yeah. Say, well, but if you park at Harbor Park, then you also have to buy a rail pass from there. Why? But, I mean, well, you, to walk. get on the train to ride from well, Harbor Park to here. You can walk. Well, you can, yes, sir. Well, part of the idea there, there, is to get out of your car and avoid the traffic. Well, I understand that. Um, and to your front door. It, we. we We've had an extensive amount of conversation about all of, all of these types of scenarios, and there's a lot of possibilities, and to a great extent we have to kind of see what happens and react to it, and it, you know, it fits into some, some other issues of incentives we're trying to do for businesses and who's paying for the parking, the individual or the employer, and you know, issues relating to the parking system. So for now, uh, you know, we're going to leave it as we're talking about, but we do have the opportunity to revisit that as, as we see what happens. You know, we're trying to guess at how people will use the rail, and they'll figure it out, and they'll be pretty clever, and we'll see what happens. Well, I'm just thinking, there's the no cost of gas. Yeah, but I'm just looking at the fact a lot of reasons. that if you, if you parked at Newtown, it's great. You take it in, you save a boatload of money. Mm -hmm. 
versus if you can if you're parking at Harbor Park anyhow. Now Barkley did have a good point that when baseball comes up and you have the new rail system that comes in, there's going to be less parking spaces. Right. We've mentioned that last time. My I'm just looking at it, it's it's awful close, and you know you park there and you're saving yourself eight bucks anyhow versus staying at Newtown. We may want to look at and reconsider what we're charging at Harbor Park for people to park there and encourage them to park out, mm -hmm. take the rail in. And I maybe thought raise right that now rate. people parked at Harbor Park and then took net in. Am I correct? Some so do, I mean, some, how many some people do, some actually won't. walk from Harbor Park? I, I, Sadly, very few. Well, right? I mean, the, the net has not been running over there since that's, we got into the I mean, construction. So are there a lot walking. of them that walk mm -hmm. from yeah, Harbor Park? Well, that's but, good then. Yeah. Yeah. Your question is a good transition from going from building it to now marketing it. Um, and just kind of some personal observations before we make this switch. because um, I've had the pleasure of trying to run away from this project for about four years. And it seems like every time I try to run away, I've been reeled back in as a communicator. Um, I don't need to go into what the history's been on building this, but it's, we, we have been... Um, We've been involved in building the largest infrastructure project in this region this century. And I think that's something that we got to all pat ourselves on the back for. There's been relationships built, there's been relationships ruined, and there's been relationships rebuilt. And one of the things it's done, though, is it's also challenged us to kind of think new ways. Um, we knew for a long, long time that there would be a conflict between the traditional parking model and a mass transit model. And we are nowhere near the New York Cities, the LA's, the, the Denver's, where they've got a, a real crunch and unless they had some kind of mass transit system. So this really is that visionary role that the mayor talked about in this morning's press conference, that there was some real guts in this room around this table to, to embark on a vision to build for the, the new generation. And that's where we're at. And yeah, people will do the math and say, okay, I can park at Harbor Park for 42 bucks or I can get $50 and park free. As Linda Davis will remind us, though, who handles a lot of our monthly parkers, that dad gets the, first of all, the question comes up about uh, the parking on the lot. That part of the cost isn't just the free and the, and the, and the $30 pass, or $50 pass, but it's also that uh, opportunity cost. In that I get up to the lot, it's, uh, it's an hour longer than I usually take. I don't really have that kind of time. I can't park as close as I want. I gotta walk a little further. It's a little more inconvenient. I get to work, and the school calls, and my kid's sick. Now i got to go out and catch light rail, get out to Newtown Road, find my car. The next day, they're signing up for monthly parking because, as Barkley says, you know, their car the week before was right next door. So there's some of those opportunity costs that people apply. And that's why it's so important now that we're moving into the marketing side that we really start listening to the people that are going to be riding it and starting to adjust as to what they're going to do. Over the last four or five years, we've been building this infrastructure project and responding to impact of construction. And out of that, we've learned from people, and we're using that as our base to, make, to go the next step with, uh, with marketing. But for about four years, I've been waiting to stand up here and tell you guys that today is for you, and on August 19th, everybody else will be able to ride this thing. It is here. It's going to happen. There are still some things that need to be worked out, which is why people will not be riding it tomorrow. That working out the signals and working out uh, the, 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 the so idea of having a train downtown. Pardon me? So why are we yeah. not? <laughs> the, the, the ask, the you know, ask Marcus. Uh, that's, yeah. no. that's, I mean, one I saw of, the woman who drove up on the track last week, so. I don't. Well, I think there, there, was some, there was some conversation about this, and the, the justification is, believe it or not, they said, because you own it, you get to ride it. There's other people that won't be able to until the 19th, but it's because you're the client on this. I do want to say one thing has changed since <laughs> since uh, February 1 is, is the approach that we've taken. Are we That's right. Yep, we sure are. That since, since February 1st, um, we've moved into a task mode. Uh, the city manager has made this not just the work of an individual, but as John says, the work of a team to pull this together. And now the marketing is going to be a true team. This packet was put together uh, over the last 48 hours for you, and hopefully in response to some of the things we heard around the table of what you were looking for. There's a, there's a folded piece on the right-hand side that I don't think John has mentioned, 
that the rider will be able to see at the station. And that's an orientation map. On the right-hand side, it's a double-folded folded, uh, 11 by 17 piece that uh, will show where they're at and how they can go around. The uh, marketing or our next step is uh, broken into basically five components. Outreach, special events and activities, publicity, promotions, and opening events. The, uh, we've been focusing a lot on having business cluster meetings, pulling our businesses together, finding out what is it that they are looking for. Again, these are relationships that we built downtown during, op during op construction. And so we're able to go to them and say, okay, what's our next step? We've got to do safety training with your employees. But then what is it, there? what kind of questions are they asking? And then feeding that information between HRT and us so we can respond to it. Uh, DNC will be having a special member briefing in July where we'll bring the downtown back together, not just to talk about safety, but also talk about trying to get reinfuse the enthusiasm. I can tell you that not only, and they're here today, not only is the media excited about this, but the general public is. You hear those whistles and those bells coming downtown, people will run to a window. To see, the, uh, to see the piece. So we want to get that energy going again. We've been working very heavily with our civic leagues along the route. And so we're rebuilding those relationships and having them talk now about getting engaged in the success of light rail and getting people enthused about it. Colleges and universities, John mentioned, I'm going to talk a little more about a program that ODU has. It's a model where ODU students, if they show their, their student ID card, they're able to ride all transit free. And by the way, that card that you got will get you on, on all modes of transit, including the ferry, uh, for a full day. And then, of course, Light Rail Now and other associations, Light Rail Now is the uh, advocacy group out of Virginia Beach. They are very enthusiastic, thanks to Brian Pennington and talking with them, very enthusiastic about getting with us and advancing uh, Light Rail. When we looked at the business cluster meetings, I wanted to focus just a few seconds on this. It wasn't a matter of just looking at where can we get the most people. But our economic development office, thanks to Sarah Parker, were able to pull together some tools that did a, um, a, a radius around each station to see what businesses were in that area and to build these long-term relationships. As I mentioned earlier in response to a question, what we're seeing on some of this analysis, it's not just people that are there, but it's opportunity. Uh, our Newtown Road cluster meeting we had June 1st was held at the, uh, the Holiday Inn Express, I call it, the Holiday Inn uh, Executive Center. And that was a relationship that was actually built when Betsy Rad was over here at the Radisson Hotel. And she's now getting a core group together to look at how can they get creative about using the light rail to come downtown. That hotel now is going to be able to market themselves as a downtown motel. Because when they have conventions come in, they can sell downtown activities and have a shuttle bus over the Newtown Road Station and move people in. So it wasn't a matter of just using old relationships, but looking at how can we build um, new ones. Special events and activities. This is the one that a lot of people are getting excited about because they want to do stuff. And the June 1st meeting was very important to us because that showed that HRT, the city, and other entrepreneurs could actually work together to share the message. We put together kind of a fair activity. There was a PowerPoint presentation. I emceed it. Uh, we had uh, Traffics, which is the, um, a, a product of HRT to talk about how to use carpooling and a variety of other mass transit modems for transportation. We had all of them there to present their wares and to educate the public. Because again, this is really a partnership of all of us working together. Uh, out of that came the model to, to set up the other cluster meetings. But also out of that came some really insightful questions. I also will tell you, I was a little cynical because having to be the front guy and talking with the media over the last four years about this project, it's easy to fall into that mindset. What we found with these 55 people that were at that meeting, they were excited. Never once did budget come up. Never once did, time, did the timeline come up. They wanted to know, when can we ride it? And when we ride it, can we have our bike? We had people wanting to know if they could put their moped on it and go. How far can I go? Where can I ride? You know, where, how far can I park away from it and walk up to it? So there was a lot of enthusiasm. And to be quite candid with you, some questions that we didn't have answers to because they weren't questions we had thought of, but we now have those answers. So it's a growth process. And we're going to encourage that you keep asking those questions because that's how we're going to learn from it. We're going to have open houses along the route. One of the things we discovered during the safety day back in April is people want to see it. They want to kick the rail, as I think you all will, will see today. So we're going to be setting up a couple of opportunities along the route between now and opening day where they'll park the train, not, not for more than maybe a half hour. It might even be just about a 10-minute type thing to have people come in be able to kick the tires, or there's no tires, kick the rail, and check the seats out. 
and then it really started interacting with it. One of the things that we know is 90 some percent of our population has not ridden on mass transit either ever or in the last two or three years. And so we've got to make a major transition and we're going to be counting on all of us to do that. The other thing that we have an opportunity to do is 60% or more of our ticket sales in Norfolk for the arts and entertainment come out of seven venues. So we pretty much control that market. And then with our relationship with uh, Ticketmaster, that basically covers almost 100%. So seven venues or cultural affairs is working up a program that will be funded uh, that will encourage a fair ticket interaction where if you're coming in to see the, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and they're not consuming all the cars, then you'll be able to, uh, to take light rail in and there'll be an exchange on your ticket. Uh, in talking with the admirals, group sales tickets, the first question you ask is, what's your, what's your largest vehicle? Well, I can get seven of my closest friends in my SUV. Well, now you can have up to 90 friends and sit and, and stand on the way to the event. So it provides opportunities to kind of really look at how we go about doing group sales. Ongoing ridership events, um, Alt Daily is going to be looking at sponsoring that, and, and you've seen some of their work already. We're not encouraging zombies on light rail, but they've got some really out-of-the-box type things that I wasn't quite sure of, which means they're probably really a good idea. And so we're going to be looking at those kinds of partnerships to really get some of the younger people on board who don't have the kind of apprehensions that we've got. We're even getting dynamic and new. Uh, you'll be seeing over the next 10 days on our website a brand new dynamic portal uh, on our website, where we'll be linking in not just to the HRT, but also some creative ideas. Uh, it's kind of scary, because now that we have a start date, people are starting to think out of the box. And so when you have a webmaster think out of the box, it becomes scary. We're now looking at putting a mermaid on the, it's not living, so it's okay. Putting a mermaid on the uh, light rail as it's going through the test mode and having a tweet contest. Uh, that we'll tweet out when the mermaid is going to be on the butt, on the light rail, and people will tweet where they found it, and we'll have a contest for free ridership. So those kinds of new creative ideas are coming from our residents who are saying, hey, have you thought about doing this? One of the things we've learned, again, since February 1, is that we can have these great ideas, but we've got to task them out. So I will warn you, that's the mode we're in. If you come up with a creative new idea, we may be asking you to chair it and, and head it up. Uh, we have an e-newsletter that was developed by Economic Development that when we have a meeting, we collect emails. We're sending these newsletters out. That's in the uh, right-hand side of your packet, I think. Um, and that gives the resident or the participant in the meeting an opportunity to interact with us, to get involved as a volunteer, uh, to uh, tell the story, to do things on the website, to talk about, to expand the, the message. The best way to do this is a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then, of course, the traffic's model, which is HRT's model to encourage... Uh, incentives and, and things like that. We're going to be launching a brand new business partnership, John uh, referred to that, which is part of the Denver EcoPass. It's a program that they use in Denver to encourage businesses and schools to, uh, to encourage their, their employees and their students to ride. It's a deeply discounted uh, program where you can basically contract for a year at a certain rate per employer or per student and buy into a deep discount on all your employees by the use of a uh, an ID card can ride free. This would encourage not just ridership on the light rail, but also to open up those barriers to riding on the bus or, or riding on the ferry. Uh, that's being pitched to the top 10 employees um, in the region and uh, the three colleges and universities. We're meeting with ODU, in fact, this Friday. It's a model off of what they already do. Um, and then we're going to be <clears throat> approaching the city about uh, looking at a, a model program there. Opening day. This is where you all come into play. And Breck Daughtry, hats off to you, sir. Thank you. Breck has taken on the, the uh, odious responsibility of uh, kind of herding the cats and bringing the committee together uh, so that we can have a, a well thought out uh, plan for opening day. As you heard today on the media, uh, the 19th, 20th, and 21st will be free, but there's opportunities to kind of really put a profile around that. Uh, we're looking at doing a thank you community celebration possibly downtown because our businesses downtown need the support. They've been wonderful partners in putting up with the construction downtown. Do events at all stations that will show what that uh, station is like, kind of going back to those first slides where we show the radius of the kind of businesses that are in those areas. And of course, the Virginia Pilot uh, has discovered that not only is it a, a news opportunity, but it might be an advertising opportunity too. So I think you'll be seeing one of the old-fashioned uh, commemorative uh, supplements that they're going to be putting out. We're working with them now on that. On the community celebration, we are including our outline. Yes. Correct? Yes. This whole... Along the whole route, we'll have the opportunity to celebrate the uh, not just the coming of, of light rail, but the coming of a new generation. You got it. 
Uh, obviously, HRT is doing a variety of uh, marketing things. Uh, they are going to be running uh, PSAs or commercials in the movie theaters. They've got the conventional media uh, program that's being uh, rolled out. They've got uh, Pulsar has been hired from them. And of course, social media already, they're uh, tweeting and Facebooking uh, light rail as we speak. So if you've got that Facebook account, uh, go ahead and go in there and like HRT. There's some key message points, and Mr. Mayor, thank you for using these this morning because I think they are. It is the reason we're in this business. Light rail is a visionary move. Light rail will create new opportunities for mobility. We're seeing it already as people talk about it. Enhanced mobility will connect all communities within Hampton Roads, but also on the Mid-Atlantic. We've actually got people talking about when high-speed rail comes in, you can actually ride your bike from Larchmont to Manhattan. Transitory development and light rail will secure Norfolk as a cultural financial. You can. I'm sorry, you, it'll work. Not, not just from Governor's School to Larchmont, but you can go all the way to Manhattan. And the well-connected managed public uh, transportation system anywhere. provides a safe system for all communities from youth to age. And Tommy, that kind of plugs in to what you talked about. Light rail is the right system for now and for our future. This is being built for future generations. And I want to say from the community and having worked with them for the last four or five years over this project, thank you for having the vision to move it forward. But it can't stop today. We all have to be working on it. And the one deliverable, as we're learning from Marcus, you always have to have a deliverable, is 2,900 butts in the seat every day. And it's going to work. Thank you. I think we're going to ride, right? Yes. Uh, the train will be leaving in like 10 to 15 minutes. Because of the safety considerations that HRT has, we can only take uh, you know, select council and selected staff and members of the media. And so let's uh, meet downstairs. And before we leave, are there any questions? Before we leave, any, yes. any questions? So Marcus, can I? One thing I've said to Marcus that I mean, his charge as the manager is to have the entire city administration within the next two months you know, pointed in one direction, and that is for a successful launch of the light rail system. We want a complete commonality of purpose throughout the entire administration that this thing is going to be successful. We want everybody to question how it can, what they can do to make it successful. This is everybody's job, not just the managers, not just John's, not just Bob's. It's all of our job to make sure this thing gets off on the right foot. And everybody in this, everybody who works for the city ought to be thinking about how they can make that happen as well. That's right. The, the, the second thing is, Marcus, do you have somebody who, like, goes to sleep at night and then wakes up in the morning worrying about ridership? I mean, who's, I don't mean just Bob, but I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I don't mean just Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know what I meant. I mean, Bob, you got, you got communications. You're doing a lot of stuff. You're providing all sorts of information on all sorts of projects. But that, that one person who every day says, we missed this opportunity, or we should have done this, or I'm glad we did that, we got to do it again, you know, I mean, who's, who's, you know, who worries about this almost on an hourly basis. And that seems to me this thing is so important to us and to our future that, that there ought to be a person charged with, you know, with, you know, riding the thing every day, sure. to check in the parking lots, to making sure they're clean, that, I mean, that the that the stations are all being well maintained, that, you know, that somebody's picking up the trash, and, the, you know, where are the riders? Is a convention coming in? Are we doing this? I mean, you know, there's a new business out at Newtown Road. Are we approaching them? Somebody who's got all of that, who becomes indispensable to us on this, on this issue. Right. Yep. You know, I don't know if I said that the right way, but, I mean, I really think that we need that person, that there is someone like that. The, is there, when, when are we expected to come back? April 19th. Like 5, 5. So everyone everyone on this council is supposed to ride this train daily, by the way. I want you, to know that. you are part you of the train. Yeah. You don't have to buy a ticket to do it. I'm not sure I can show houses on the train. Okay. You can show is there Wi Fi on the train? <laughs> Where's the house? We go by. That's one of those questions that we got from uh, the. I think currently, there is not. However, it is wired to the Kennedy. Yeah, um, as I said, the Max bus, which goes from the ocean front to uh, Newtown Road, does have Wi-Fi. So you can use Wi-Fi from the ocean front to Newtown Road and then have the peace and quiet of rail travel. Well, I hope at some point we'll have Wi-Fi. Probably sooner than later. That that needs to be is, is, is there an association of light rail organizations and people? I mean, is there? 
Is there a there. website? Is there an organization of yes. communities that have light rail that yeah. talk about best practices and all of that? Free Wi-Fi. 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 Free Wi-Fi.